Hello, my name is Maria and this is Matthew, my mascot. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to multiply by whole tens in columns. First, I'm going to solve this, 63 times 9. So we go 9 times 3 equals 27. 7 here, 2 tens are regrouped, and then 9 times 6 plus 2. So we have 54 plus 2, 56. Okay, so that is 567. And now I have a question for you. What do you think 63 times 90 would be? See, I just calculated 63 times 9. But what about 63 times 90? There's the whole 10 multiplying by 90. Can you guess? I think you can. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's going to be 5670. 5, 5670. In other words, I can take this and tag a zero there, right? And now, why would that be? It is because, if I think of 63 times 90, this is the same as 63 times 9 times 10, right? 90 equals 9 times 10. And here I can first calculate this. And then take that result times 10. And times 10 means that you tag a zero in the end. So we get 567, 567 times 10 equals 5670. All right, let's use this little idea, little trick, if you want to, with this problem. 517 times 60. 517 times, but I'm going to only multiply times 6, because that's easier. Like that. And then, in the end, I'm going to put a 0 there. 6 times 7, you tell me, 42. Then 6 times 1 plus 4 is 10. So 0 here, and regroup that. 6 times 5 plus 1, 31. So, our original problem will have the answer of the same thing with a zero there, right? 31,020. Easy, right? Over here, we're going to do the same, but just a little bit differently. So, observe, pay attention. This time, I'm going to write 57 times 40 instead of times 4. But since I know that in the end I'm going to tag a zero, right? Then I'm going to actually put a zero in the end of the number at first. Isn't that funny? And then I'm going to multiply four times 57, kind of ignoring this zero. I imagine it's not there, and I multiply four times seven, four times 50. Follow me thus far. Four times seven, 28. Four times five plus two, 22. And now I didn't need to tag any zero in the end because I put it there in the beginning. So, is that Matthew? Oh, well, he's saying he likes that trick. Yeah, it's kind of handy, isn't it? Makes it easy. Let's try it one more time. Okay, here's a whole 10, 80. So I can make it simpler by multiplying by eight only. But I'm going to still write the zero there. And then I'm going to start out by putting the zero here. This is the zero I would normally put or tag in the end. And then I ignore this zero and multiply eight times that. Eight times nine, 72. Eight times two is 16 plus seven, 23. And then 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2, 18. So 18,320, right? Abby's house measures 30 feet by 36 feet. Matthew's house is 40 feet by 28 feet. So yeah, Matthew, you have a good sized house. Which one has the bigger area? How much bigger? Area of a house, okay? For that, for the area of a rectangle, you, of course, multiply the side lengths. So our task is first to multiply those two numbers. Then we also need to multiply those two. 30 times 36, okay? Notice I write 36 times 
30. 30 there under the 36. Because then I use my trick. I can put 0 here to start with and then just multiply 3 times 36. 3 times 6. 18 and then 3 times 3 plus 1 is 10. Okay? Then the other one. 40 times 28, but I will write 28 on top and 40 under, so I can use my little trick. 0 here, so I just put 0 and then multiply 4 times that. 4 times 8. 32, and then this is 8 plus 3, 11. So we can see Matty's house has the bigger area. And how much bigger? Can you tell? Just look at the numbers, ignore the thousands, there's 80 and 120. The difference is just 40. 40 what? What's the unit? This is about area. So it is square feet. Remember that? 40 square feet. Or you can write it 40 ft and the elevated little 2. Both of these mean square feet. Lastly, calculate 5000 minus 70 times 49. There's something you need to remember before you start. What's that? Oh, Matthew knows. Aha, order of operations. We do not subtract first, we multiply first. Okay, 70 times 49. But see, I can use my trick, so I will put 49 and then 70 under. So multiply first. 0 goes there, then 7 times 9, 63. How about 7 times 4? 28 plus 6 is 34. Okay, that's done. Then subtract. Yep. 0 minus 0. Ah, this is easy. 0 minus 3. Well, okay. That means I need to regroup. Take one of those thousands. 10 here. Then take one of them. 10 here. And then we have 7 and 5 and 1. Okay, so our final answer is right there. So, we're all done with this lesson.